come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday in our quest for total world domination. Uh, hey, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you, so we'd really appreciate it if you'd do it. You can follow us along on social media also. We'll tell you how to do that in a little bit. But first of all, these are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm Colin. I used to be Holly, but now I've, no. been, I've been possessed by a mucus alien. <laughs> oh, you really have. I have. <laughs> that might t- tie into tonight's movie, which was chosen by... Holly. Yeah. What did we watch tonight? <laughs> tonight we watched Without Warning. Ooh, from the year. 1980. Mm. And directed by? Graydon Clark. Graydon Clark. That Does that sound familiar, familiar to anyone? Who is this guy? I mean, maybe you've seen Satan che- Satan's Cheerleaders, but you've probably <laughs> seen Uninvited. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, you know, <laughs> we, we did an episode on Uninvited. That the crazy-ass movie. movie yeah. About the Russian nesting doll of evil cats. That's yeah. right. On a yacht. That's on right. a yacht. Yeah, with George Kennedy. With George Kennedy. Oscar yeah, winner was, George yeah, Kennedy. Yeah, that, was, that was a gem. And and great, great summertime boat was, movie. Yes. Yeah, that was a gem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Satan's Cheerleaders, I have not seen. It's always been on the bucket that's list. It's a great yeah. title, though. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I just remember that was one of the like uh, video store movies. It always seemed, every yeah. video store seemed seem to have that uh you know cassette but they also seem to always have without warning uh yeah. this yeah. had like a poster and that, a great poster. good poster mm-hmm. had a great poster yeah which i now hate <laughs> misleading fucking misleading mm-hmm. you're like i was sold a rotten bill of goods i on was this one. well okay so the the trailer for this is uh i have you know a couple of those trailer compilation discs mm-hmm. and it has this on there and it front loads the idea that like there's an alien, there's an alien in this in movie. This? You see the alien, you see him whipping shit. You know the little flying yeah. discus, discuses around. So every piece of footage of that alien from that's in the this end movie of the movie is, is in, in that, that trailer, trailer. Sure. and you're like, oh, I can't Sons wait to see this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. I have actually seen parts of this before I have on television, but watching it tonight was like I don't remember any of this until they got to the cabin, and that may be where I came in. I'm like, yeah. oh, I remember this. Who got to the cabin? Who's in this movie? Oh, so this movie that we just watched. Um, what what team up do we get again? I mean, <laughs> regrettably so I again. Like, I feel like you're holding this against me, and okay, I it's, it's not my fault. <laughs> Wait, have, you brought that movie too, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think this it is, is your fault. fault. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I regret nothing. <laughs> uh, we have a Jack Palance and Martin Landau. Ooh. I know this. this is again <laughs> for the first time they've teamed up that we've seen. Since uh, Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark. Sean's going to be triggered by this pair for the rest of his life now. Uh, truly, if <laughs> yeah. anyone ever brings with these two in, and I'm, I'm just be like, I can't. I mean, I know it, exactly what we're going to get. I mean, now yeah. it's my mission to find another yeah, one. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> how many of these Go are for the there? the hat trick. Yeah. I, have, I have two missions now, to bring Satan's cheerleaders <laughs> and to find another movie with this pair. Oh, that's yeah. right. You want to put, uh, what was it, Graydon Clark. Clark I want to put wall. him on the wall. Oh, he deserves They're it. both in Satan's cheerleaders, I'm for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. That'll be fine. Because he directed for a while, right? I mean, like, yeah. it seems like this is, I mean, more of a movie movie than Uninvited. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I was yeah. like, as, how dare you? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was like, as we'll get into it, but I mean, as much as I hate to say it, this movie's actually fairly polished. Mm. Well, it, yeah. like, it kind Except of. Except <laughs> for the, the discus alien. Oh, no, None it's got that. problems, and we'll get into it. But <laughs> the like, flesh frisbee? But yeah, it feels flesh like, like a oh. legitimate. Yeah, <laughs> the it's what flesh it is. frisbee. Oh. There yeah. you go. It literally like just throwing like a frisbee, <laughs> but it's like when you f- when they first show it, there's like hair on. Yeah, it's, it's a hairy, yeah. flesh a hairy frisbee. flesh frisbee, yeah. and then it eventually becomes a mucus sack. Yeah, yeah or like a fry- <laughs> that's, that's how he sniffs. <laughs> it is. A, it's like a fried egg thing. This is the weapon that the alien uses. Yeah, he's in this throwing movie. pancakes at people. That's yeah, what this is. flesh yeah. pancakes though. They're yeah, because yeah. yeah. you gotta they like, gotta cut them off, and so there's always like a lot of squishy sound yeah. effects. Why and a lot of ketchup and mustard? I, yeah. out of it. I don't understand why Jack Pallet is the only one that figured out to yeah. cut them off. He has a secret weapon. He carries a, a knife. knife with him. Yeah, yeah. Like all these people are camping without knives. 
Yeah. They're not they're, road trips without knives. You're a Cub Scout master. Yeah. yeah. How does the not Cub, a good one. How does the Cub Scout master that have dude, a knife? That dude had sunstroke. He had blisters. I'll guarantee it. Yeah. He was a <laughs> he rough shit. He, he smashed his cigarette trying to light it. He, he was like, yeah, he rough did. Yeah, there was going to be a newspaper headline in a week. It was like, <laughs> Cub Scouts found eight camp leader alive to survive in this yeah. wilderness. Oh, yeah. That'd be a really good true crime podcast. We I'll could, listen to that. pivot off of this movie into that. Yeah. So this movie uh, came out in eighty four. It's uh, Eight. it's not. It feels kind of like a slasher. 80. Or, oh, 80, 80. Sorry, eighty. Yeah. It feels kind of like a slasher movie, but it's not. It has it, the setup of a slasher. It does movie. have yeah. the setup. Yeah. It's got the photographer of a slasher movie. Mm-hmm. It sure shot does. this movie. Dean Cundy. Dean Cundy shot yeah. this movie. Dean. There's a lot of Dean like, uh, yeah, Dean Cundy from Halloween, obviously, and you know later Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, and all that stuff. But uh, also Greg Canham did the uh, makeup effects for yeah. the alien uh, when we eventually see the alien. <laughs> well, and, what else well, has Greg Canham done? Oh, uh, Greg Bram Canham did Stoker's like, Dracula. Oh, oh no. He worked. He was worked on like Dick Tracy. Titanic, oh yeah, if there's special cocoon. effects. They've worked on everything. Like yeah, he's, he's there's a lot of work to do in Dick Tracy. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a big thing to have on your resume because just Lost the amount Boys. of stuff yeah. you had yeah. to do. Yeah, he's done a shit ton of stuff. He did like Batman Returns. He yeah. worked on a lot of stuff. Yeah, because Lost Boys, I remember he was the one who moved the fangs. He did the fang effect. Yeah. The, yeah, he did the fang effect. He did Bark at the Moon, the Ozzy mm-hmm. Osbourne. Oh, yeah. yeah, he did Nightmare on Elm Street three. I think a lot of people worked on. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, but yeah. The, I mean, 1980. So this is like all of these thriller, guys. Thriller. Thriller. The thriller. Oh, the, yeah. yeah, the Michael yeah. Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's worked on a lot of stuff. Um. So we have okay. So the the plot of this movie. Well, we have kind of a, like a cold open, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, into right. this. Well, we my have, mind yep. rewinding. Oh, back. the uh, father and son. Yes, we have right. father and son. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cameron Mitchell, right? right. Another mm-hmm. like Hollywood. There's a bunch of like old Hollywood actors, yeah. who apparently in 1980 were all down on their luck and ended up <laughs> yeah, no bamboozled into starring in this movie. <laughs> and granted, Cameron Mitchell, I think it like. You know, I mean, he did the toolbox murders only a couple of years <laughs> before this, but, you know, uh, Italian films before that. And then was a Hollywood, you know, guy before that yeah. you know, yeah. historical epics and whatever. Mm. Um, so it's him and Darby Hinton. Well, actually, OK, so so here's the thing, though, like the scene's pretty good because you got uh, uh, Cameron Mitchell's all done. Up. He's out like hunting in the woods. Right. Yeah. He's full on hunter, all camo, all decked out with his rifle. Yeah, as hat. you do. And he, as you he, do. He comes to he's up bright and early because he's hunting. Yep. And he goes to a uh, trailer. Yeah. Yeah. And is like, son, get up. You're coming out hunting with me. And his son is like, I just want to sleep a little bit yeah. more. And we only see a foot. We just yeah. see a foot sticking out from a blanket. It's like, I want to sleep more, dad. <laughs> it's very- <laughs> and, so, right. and then a 45 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> with a glorious mustache. Yeah. He's yeah. older than his father somehow. Yeah. I know, that's what I was like, wait, how this is supposed to be this guy's kid? But right. yeah, it's Darby Hinton, who does have a little bit of a tie to, because uh, we did Hard Ticket to Hawaii, yeah. Yeah. which was an Andy Sedaris movie, but he, one of his first was Malibu Express, starring Darby Hinton <laughs> as the original. Love it. Did he have this mustache? In yes, he movie? did. Oh, it feel, it, it, I feel like that's why you hire him. Right, yeah. 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 Oh, we haven't done Malibu Express, have we? No. 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 We just talk about it a lot. He's almost on the wall. Almost. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. almost there. So this father and son pair going out. Dad's going to teach yeah. the kid, like, you know, there's nothing like. Nothing it, like the hunt, son. The hunt. It, like, it makes the conversation even funnier because he's actually like a 45-year-old man. That He's yeah. like, you lived with your mom, so you grew up a sissy. I'm going to teach you how to be a man. And it's like, dude, he's like, like Sean said, he's got a mortgage. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, he's got, he's got five children at home. Right. What's going on here? <laughs> but his whole thing is, I'm not going to shoot any animals. And so he like unloads No, he reads Joseph shotgun. Campbell. And yeah. He's, yeah, he's not into he's like, I don't need to fire a gun to be a man. And I agree with him well, yeah. wholeheartedly. So he just sits down in the woods. And then unfortunately, dad is attacked by. Yeah, but He's be- attacked without warning, Colin. <laughs> but before dad's attacked. By flesh frisbees. But before dad's attacked, like he's pretty much about to shoot his son, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> that happens. He's, he, intense he, opening. He stops himself from doing it two separate times. Right. Yeah. And his, yeah. Like, his like face is just like, I can't do it. And it's I like, well, no, yeah. you can't. You're about to murder your son. But then son. he's also like, but I have to. Yeah. yeah and it's the like, world will be like, better off like without him. My son's just never going to be a man. So like, so I must kill him? It's yeah. the weirdest choice. It's the, I, I'm like, okay, yeah, this this dude could die. I'm okay with that. It's one of the most interesting choices this movie made. <laughs> I know because. Yeah, they, I need the, to know more about this backstory yeah. here. Yeah, because even the dynamic there was like, okay, then, you know, dad is all of a sudden these 
these little flash pancakes like uh, yeah. spin their way out of the woods and attach to them it's and like, they well, have little suckers or what not suckers but tendrils yeah. I feel like it would have been more dynamic to have the storyline be that it's the father and son throughout the whole movie and the son ends up saving the father right and what? he's like, you are a man. Yeah, son. would that have been <laughs> a more of a man than I'll ever story? be? Yeah. Yes. Well, there's a lot of. <laughs> we'll say this is a movie with a lot of missed opportunities, both sure narratively, uh, you know, direction, you know, everything. Yes. But um, that's one of them. Yes. Uh, Could have been a, a more interesting movie. But the son doesn't really like, you know, dad's like, oh, oh, I'm dying. And son's like, dad? And then he just kind of stands there and watch the man watches the man die in front of say, him. Maybe that son didn't need to learn a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, the right. dad's just like, I just don't want to die here with you. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the son was on the same page. Like, dad was about to kill a son. Son sees opportunity. Like, yeah, oh, my maybe. dad's dying. Well, all right, mm-hmm. dad's dying. Fuck like really <laughs> CPR. So okay, but we are right. Those uh, those uh, eight screenwriters, four screenwriters, there whatever. Five. I think there were five. Five screenwriters. I think there were five. Are There's... setting up a theme here with this opening oh. scene. And this is all going to be about hunting. At Pray least tell. This... <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah, hunting is a theme. Well, of, it's a uh, movie. Yeah, but not like gone into in any kind of way. It's just like okay, that's what we're actually foreshadowing. I mm-hmm. guess that uh, you know where our alien is going to be, what the motivation or whatever. Yeah, um, he's, like, he's predator. I feel like. Uh, just, discussing the writers is fairly important oh why so um, the, well what else have there's, they there's three main ones lynn freeman which i'm not sure what lynn freeman's done but daniel grodnick who wrote terror train oh shit. oh shit and also bennett tramer who wrote bennett Bo- tramer ben wrote, tramer who wrote poison ivy but oh, also man. wrote all of saved by the bell <laughs> what oh, oh, my God. God. and he had to be a friend of you know, yeah. that and makes all sense because there's some saved by the bell logic in this movie right yeah that's why oh, i was my. like we need to talk about that real quick because saved by the bell is key here i yeah. think really? saved, saved by the bell like operates on like theater stage direction where like you could be standing three feet from someone, but if you turn away, you can talk about them and they don't hear them. Oh, it's yeah, that yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. like oh, that's, that's how Saved by the Bell exists, yeah. yeah. And it uses that kind of like flimsy, minimalist, low budget logic. Yeah. yeah, it does. There's a lot of <laughs> again, it's calling into question the direction Which, on this movie. It but. just it just makes me giggle because it's like okay, we've got we've got the dude that worked on like fucking Cocoon and Lost Boys and did some amazing special effects. We've got Dean Cundy mm-hmm. and then we've got the writer of Saved by Saved the Bell. By the Bell. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> just makes me giggle. I would love, I would just love to <laughs> see. Where the... continuity means nothing. Nothing. Oh. Yeah. I'd love to see Whatever happened to Jesse's brother. Yeah. I want to know. Anyway, so why can he, Step-brother. why can he freeze time? Why, why can Zach time? Morris freeze time Kelly, Kelly and break like the fourth wall? Siblings. We saw one of them. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like anyway. this, though, that we are kind of we're exploring cinematic history with well, all these movies. I want to see. I want to see we, this yeah. movie in the middle and then just all the lines. We want, where everybody... we want, yeah, we want the red string wall. Yeah. I want to yeah. see where everybody ended up. I know. Yeah. That's what we're doing here in this show. That's why I love this. But, uh... but yeah, you mentioned the Predator. <laughs> yeah. I'll... Obviously, Predator. Very influential in this movie. Um, Wait, the other the, the, the flip. predator was influenced by this. Movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah. Predator was heavily influenced by this movie. Uh, same actor played Predator and the alien of this movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. Kevin it, Peter yeah. Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kevin Peter was... Hall. I'm like, am I the only person who actually knows what Kevin Kevin Peter Hall looks like? Because he was on a probably show. A very tall yeah, probably. Man. It was there was he was on a show called Misfits of Science with oh. Courtney Cox that I remember watching. What? They were all they all what? like what got zapped. It had to be like eighty five or oh, something wow. like that. Oh. And they all had different superpowers. It was like an NBC show, and it ran for like a season. And I remember it because it had the girl from the Dancing in the Dark music video. Right, yeah. Really? But I remember seeing Kevin Peter Hall and then just being like, okay, he's an actor in this. And then like when Predator came out, you're like played by Kevin Peter Hall. And you're like, wait a second. That guy from the show is. And then it turns out he has this on his resume. I have never heard of that show. (laughs) Misfits of Science. No, it's not going to watch it. We had, yeah. better, we had better shows back then. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to go back. More now, but we had better shows back then. But the intersection of all this stuff. Um, I know. So, I guess yeah. the Predator was throwing metal flesh frisbees. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's the same. Okay, so the concept of the movie is, right, this is not revealed to us for a great long period of time <laughs> in the actual movie as you're watching it, which I think is kind of disappointing because yeah. all the promotional materials tell you this like i think it says it on the poster you know it's like he's here to you know uh, yeah whatever the, a- the alien terror is here on earth it preys on human fear it feeds on human flesh and the last one is earth is the hunting ground man is the endangered species right yeah 
And you have the tra- the trailer, which basically sets it up that this is an alien that's come to Earth to hunt humans, right? So yeah, it's Predator meets the most dangerous game. Yeah, but yeah. pre Predator. So there you go, right, folks. Right. So it's like more PTSD. Is, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> For fun. <laughs> For fun. I'm like, I am actually kind of amazed at like the character writing in this movie. Amazed in what way? Mm-hmm. I'd, like you, I'd like you to clarify. Do, do ex- yeah. Like how much time is spent on those subjects? On those subjects, yes. rather than like the rest of the movie. Well, because you <laughs> thought you were coming in to see a movie about an alien coming to Earth and hunting you. That's what alien the poster told me. Until forty-five minutes into this movie, yeah. I just wanted a big-headed alien shadow, and I didn't get it for a long time. Yeah, but you're, you're saying you got the shadow at forty-five minutes. You yes. get the yeah. alien at like one. 20 One, yeah. Uh, yeah out of a 90 minute movie yeah yeah uh so beware um <laughs> so this yeah, is your warning for without warning it really is a movie that is <laughs> yeah, about the, the first uh, 20 minutes of the movie are nothing but warnings. nothing but warnings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of warnings in this it's movie. everybody saying don't don't go to don't that go lake don't he do literally it. says just think you should be warned yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. what do, uh, what? What's the opposite of the Leo meme? Because that's like this is like no, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. I know we were sold. We were told it was going to happen without warning. Yeah. Damn it. Okay, so who's being warned in this situation after the cold open? Who are we introduced okay, to? So who's now, our protagonist? Right. So now we have four. Uh, I guess they're teenagers, early twenties. Do yeah. you know their ages? I don't know. They're like the Scooby Gang. They're they like just Scooby rolling around in their van. Two guys, two girls in a big yellow van. Mm. One of them being. David Caruso. <laughs> One, uh, yeah. Oh, damn it, I should have took my glasses off. <laughs> One, okay. I did it. It is, though. It's David Caruso. It's David Caruso. Anyway, short as shorts. Yeah. No ginger should wear. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I disagree. Oh. You got a thing for David Caruso or just ginger? You like gingers. I'm I like sorry. gingers. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> so well, how did you feel about David Caruso in this movie? He do it for you? I mean, should we talk about that? <laughs> He's he in the movie. Very short shorts. I mean, yeah, it worked for me. Okay. Sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate guys in skimpy clothes. We don't get it that much, okay? I agree. Yeah. I know, we got to go back I'm to the 80s. I'm an equal opportunity, when, yeah. Yeah, swimming, yeah. Sh- uh, swimming suits were different back then. Yeah, I was going to say, all the fashion from Sleepaway Camp uh, should yeah. come yeah. back. Crop yeah. tops. Crop tops, yeah. yeah. yeah we talk Crop about tops, that. short shorts, yeah. Yep. Love it. High socks with the short shorts. Yes, all day, every day. Love it. Colin, <laughs> next week, this is what we're doing, and we're going to make him regret it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. all right, fashion. Summer's fashion coming. Ways. Yeah. Uh, I did recognize that his girlfriend in the movie was all, I can't remember what her name was, but she was also uh, in Humanoids from Teal. the Deep. Um, what's her name? Like, um, Taryn. Tara Nutter? Yeah, Beth. Her name was Beth in the movie. <sighs> no, it wasn't Tara Nutter, because she was the it main was girl. Lynn Thiel. Mm. Lynn Thiel. Lynn Thiel, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Lynn Thiel, yes. And she was in Humanoids from the Deep. So again, we're Same seeing here. like, wow, there's a bunch of people in this mm-hmm. movie that you might recognize from other stuff. And then uh, then there's the two other, I guess the, the guy looked like, I thought that it, initially it was... Um, the Rob from Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, right? Yeah. yeah, he had that kind of like, is that, that him? Vibe. But it's like, no, it's not him. But he looks like him, and he looks like Sebastian Stan. Like, yeah, he, he does. does. It's he really crazy. Does. A little bit. Uh, then he, uh, so the four of them are in a, a VW, as you do, like in these movies, because it's a slasher movie setup. Got yeah. and they the are fan going to hang out. Yep, just going to the lake. Yeah, that's to, it. To, to as your basic premise. Yeah, build yeah. from there. But they stop at a gas station, which mm-hmm. apparently uh, hasn't been occupied in, in like 25 years. Cause it, Based this, on cobwebs. Yeah. Inside this thing. But it has. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it starts to feel a little Texas Chainsaw Master, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. There's like, the, the rat having babies in a hat. <laughs> yeah. That was the most random thing. And then, then the one character is like, rat babies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause, there's taxidermy and animals everywhere. Some yeah, very poorly all, done. Like, it, he can't get much business. How has he not cleaned his office up? You know? Who? Ty- uh, Taylor. Taylor. Played by Jack Palance. That's right. Plants. So, this is where he what shows up? up, and we're like, so is the movie, let me ask you this. Like, uh, whose movie is this? My problem was that I went into this having seen the promotional stuff. So, I'm like, I know that there's an alien in this movie. Sure. Okay. But is the movie trying to go, like, are we setting up a most dangerous game scenario here? I mean, we've seen yeah. the flesh pancake killer things, but it still hasn't kind of explained, like, alien. Uh, Mm -hmm. So is it like Jack Palance is not to be trusted because he may be like this crazy dude? That's what I was hoping. (laughs) Yeah, that was the vibe I was getting. Because you didn't know going into this movie what it was about. Nope. So they were going, that was an angle that they were trying to exploit here. And then you also meet Martin Landau. Right. Yeah, because I didn't get like the, 
I mean, I got the crazy Jack Palance stuff, but I got more that they were setting it up that he was like actually going to be possessed by that alien. Like the alien took, took his form. Because at one point, Martin Lando, that's what he thinks, right? Yeah, they take the form of people, which is yeah. just like a... So I was yeah, like, throwaway. okay, so eventually crazy Martin Lando is going to be the one that was actually sane and called it, and Jack Plants is actually an alien in disguise. Okay. So that's kind of what I thought it was going to happen. Got it. Well, the, um, the group goes to the lake. There's another, uh, like, you know, slasher, you know, filler scene where the guy from F Troop is leading. <laughs> he's a scout Which, master. Colin, I swear I've heard you say that sentence before when we were watching movies. Like, I know F Troop has been a point of reference for us for some reason in the past. Yes. Yeah, we, I think we, it was yeah. Somebody, yeah, somebody yeah. else showed up as a cop in some movie who was, um... <laughs> Uh, How much Agar have you guys and... watched F Troop? I watched F Troop like, a lot. I think really? yeah, Sean's our resident F Troop. Yeah. Uh, I've Nick never night, watched. I, I, I watched it in black and white and color. <laughs> it was in both. See, I was all about some Nick at Night, but I never got F Troop. Oh. I never it watched was it. Like early on, like I yeah. was. I'm surprised. I remember. I don't remember. A a lot. I remember watching it a lot. Yeah. I'm surprised I remember as much as I do. I just remember shelving seasons of it at Barnes and Noble all the time. And I think like I just imprinted their faces from that constantly <laughs> seeing them. Like, yeah. I associate mind, that face with F Troop. And yeah. in your mind you're like, this is someone's grandma's Christmas present. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 F Troop. Well, we got the, the scout master then is uh, he wanders off by himself from these. You know, he's terrorizing these uh, Boy Scouts who, you know, don't know what they're what they're. He has to like, oh, no, no, no. There is a plot point here that I'm not sure if this was carried through the rest of the movie. It kind of is that there is uh, some kind of uh, disturbance in the area because of the alien being here. Right. His, His compass, compass is work. like spitting. It doesn't. Point oh, I missed that Yeah. Yeah. Well, he later of uh, the radio, the radio won't tune right. correctly. Yeah. And later there's plants that are all dried up and dead. And we're like, okay, is this supposed to have something to do with the alien being there? It's never really addressed. Or I was going to say, when she picked up that dead plant, I'm like, oh, the alien's dying. Like, that's the first thing that came to my head. Yeah, Just because yeah, I'm like, yeah, fucking yeah. ET. <laughs> <laughs> like, alien's dead somewhere. We're fine, folks. <laughs> But the scoutmaster, he gets uh, done away with by the alien again. We don't see it. We just it's the uh, discus, you yep. know, pancake thing attacks. Uh, the kids apparently see an alien and then just run out of the movie, yeah. Yeah. screaming. Who like knows monkeys. where they went? Yeah, they had some sort of Lord of the Flies type. Yeah, that's where they ended up now. Well, there yeah. was there was a moment later in the movie with uh, the the sheriff was out looking for a missing uh, Boy Scout troop. Yeah, supposedly. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's why he couldn't come to the, the that's, bar. That's where, the more uh, interesting movie. Were, yeah. <laughs> Let's head over there yeah. and see what they're up to. <laughs> right? I agree. You just want to reach into this movie and grab the camera. People are like, oh, yeah. go no, no, that's quiet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is an R-rated movie? Yes. I it is? No, so. yes. it said R at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Okay, for what? I know. We don't have any real... I mean, the, the, the gore is pretty much confined to close-ups of watching it's this ketchup thing. Ketchup and mustard, yeah. For yeah. For flesh frisbee. But there's no <laughs> there's no nudity. I don't remember, like, a I'll bunch put, of F-bombs. I'll put it was no. cut out. I, I was going to say, like, I think the nudity was cut, because she is topless. Yes. You, we can see I that believe there topless. was a sex scene, and yeah, more of I those shots of her hanging in the... Thing. So I, I think all the nudity was cut out. I agree. I Which think is so strange. Too. In order to get like a presumably a PG rating, but then it didn't. I mean, if it's yeah. rated R, yeah. so I don't know. Weird. Um, unless we're wrong about that, but I, I assume it it's, said like big. Uh, there was a big yeah, blue R. R the, before, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it said yeah. It's in the corner for like five minutes. Rated R. <laughs> rated R. <laughs> uh, we, pr we promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they end up at this lake, which we're like. Uh, that's a dam. Lake. There's like yeah. you know, you go over it's the side sketch. of that, and, you know. Yeah. This is stagnant water that you it's don't very want. Very stagnant yeah. water. Yeah. yeah, it's sketch. And then uh, our hero pair, which I'm sorry, I don't remember their names, but leaving Caruso and the humanoids from the deep uh, girl behind mm -hmm. to apparently yes. have sex in the water, and then uh, when our hero pair return, uh, Caruso and the girl, other girl, are gone. So we miss like the the kill scene. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just there. like where'd they go? So this is what the scene you're thinking that was deleted, right? I think so. I, yeah, because they probably it got seems like it. I'll bet they got murdered mid sex. But so the makeup effects were so shitty. Well, no, but also <laughs> they had to cut it out. But I'll bet she was naked for most of it. And the hand, you're thinking and they, they would cut, cut it specifically it. for the nudity, not because of some appliance or something. Or maybe work. it was maybe Probably. it was written 
to be a kill scene and they didn't have the budget for it. Mm. Something. Or it was never shot, maybe? Maybe. 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 But maybe. there is something that's supposed to be there that is, is not for Yeah, because it's reason. weird to have yeah. one of these movies where you don't like linger on the you know the death scene of, yeah. uh, of a character since we do see everybody else uh, get killed. But uh, then they wander off to a uh, cabin that they find in the woods. It's like a water department. Yeah, it's uh, a, yeah like a water department shed. And in there is the trophy room where mm. the alien has kept all of his it's victims. It's his refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. And the nice hot summer sun. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> this is all happening basically in the same day, right? I yeah. Mean, uh, we're saying this whole movie takes place over about a 24-hour period. Yeah. yeah. So I guess this leads us to the movie, to me, felt like, okay, it actually started and by the time they got to, so they go to the local bar to report this. Right, yeah, because they're, they're at the watershed and then they get back to town and they found this little tavern and they, um, what's his name? What's his name? Martin Lennon. I don't know. Jack the Lamb. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> like, well, they get back. No, I don't know where you were going either. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. The hero kid, he comes in and he's like, we got to call the sheriff. And there's like a whole to do about. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he walks in, he's like, my friends are dead. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And they've had like one of the things, the sucker thing stuck in the window. And that's when we actually see that this sucker thing. The underside. Has like teeth. That are just going. Claws. Now, would it have been more interesting if that thing actually did burrow through the windshield? Yeah. 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 Something like that. Started to. It, it doesn't seem no, like it would have been better if it started to. I thought I heard a crack. Yeah. But yeah. Who knows in this movie? But it seems like there's no sense of urgency because it's it's not doing anything. So yeah. why are we so? And freaked then he just out? uses the wipers and gets rid of it. So, yeah. <laughs> and so it, maybe like, use the wipers yeah. but five <laughs> minutes after they've been staring at it, sucking right. on the windshield. Yeah. But he gets there. And he's like, "You gotta help." Gotta help us. Neville Brand is in this movie for some dumb reason. Is uh, I mean, like you know, because they have like the locals at the, yes, at the bar. bar. Who are like okay, you know? Well, we don't. Whoa, whoa, we don't want to call the cop. We don't get the sheriff involved unless it's, unless it's actually yeah. something. Why'd right. you tell us the story first? Right. Yeah, and of course <laughs> Martin Landau is there. So and they've heard this story before. Because Sarge. who is he? Sergeant he, Sarge. Sarge. He is Fred. Fred Dobbs. Fred. Sergeant Fred Dobbs. Yes. Uh, he was in the war. He has major PSD. PTSD from yeah. this. Yeah. And he's always. Sometimes he's here with us. Sometimes he's back in the war. And yeah. Sometimes the worlds collide. But he also <laughs> has uh, told wild stories about aliens and the flesh frisbees and whatnot. He's mm-hmm. basically Randy Quaid from Independence Day. Yeah. Yes. He's he's more deadly. Had yeah. some more kind crazy. of encounter with the aliens yes. before. Yeah. But the locals won't They're listen. They're like, hey, to Sarge, the kid's seen your little UFOs. Yes. Well, it's like we're. I guess it's. And then we begin this journey. Yeah, this becomes this the movie ju- that you're watching. This is the movie. Because I was like, I thought I was getting aliens, but what I'm actually getting is some kind of like tug of war between uh, Martin Landau and Jack Palance. Yeah. yeah. As like, and I'm like, you actually forget about the kids. I think for a while, and then until they're reintroduced again for the the mm-hmm. climax. Right. But and- it really becomes like Jack Palance and Martin Landau. Yeah. Uh, Martin Landau, because he's got all these flashbacks, keeps on is like, okay, he's unreliable, right? Yeah. He starts waving guns around and all this. It's kind of a broad Shoots swipe at, you know, yeah. uh, Vietnam veterans. Yeah. So how does that happen? Um, so the power is this, the power goes out. Yeah, first? power goes out. Because he's telling yeah. him like it's an invasion force. Right. This is how right. you do it. You take over a small town and you fan out and blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Right. And then as he's telling this story, the power goes out and they're all like Ah, Sarge, it's just the power department. We get these all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then the sheriff uh, uh, in the well, they're pitch like, darkness. Yeah. Well, they're hearing like various noises yeah. from outside, and they never really specify what we're, what we're hearing. No, but then the sheriff the comes Sheriff the walks door, in. In darkness, with shot at an angle, uh, looking up. So they're just like, oh, the halo of his hat will make it look like the giant alien head. Right. That would be why we'd shoot him. Sure. Or, yeah, but, but we haven't seen the alien yet. To Colin, have a- I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know him. <laughs> I agree. So we have an a, a shadow, an outline in a doorway that looks like an American sheriff. <laughs> and Martin Landau is like. cartoony looking sheriff. <laughs> he's got a cowboy yeah. hat on and the whole nine yards. Yeah. <laughs> But he gets shot. Martin Landau shoots yeah. him because he's a wild, wild, wild cannon at yeah. this point. Um, 
So they get an ambulance there, like, you know, uh, split. on the, you know, like, hey, we got to get an ambulance mm-hmm. here. And they show up. We had to wait like 15 hours for the, or 50, whatever. Uh, I had to wait an hour <laughs> for the sheriff. Yeah. So he's out dealing with those Boy Scouts. Um, <laughs> but then there's like no, I guess the sheriff was the only authority in this town because then Martin Landau is just left to kind of up to his own devices. He's yeah. told you like, yeah, he just shot. He literally shot the sheriff. <laughs> yeah. But there was there's, no deputy. There's no deputy. There's no deputy not to shoot. Yeah. Why didn't someone in that bar put that on the jukebox right after that? Right. Happened? Right. That would have been and really it comes funny. Out and looks at it and then some dude kicks it off. Yeah. Like, oh, that's too, too obvious. Poor too taste. Too yeah. 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 Like maybe, I don't know, maybe invoke a citizen's arrest or something. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Something. Yeah. Like, oh, he's just going to hang out in the shadows. Something. He did shoot the sheriff. He shot the sheriff. He is, that is literally the only, uh, officer in town yeah you only get the like yeah. you better hope he's not dead right you know because then then you'll they'll be held to pay right, you know? right. i mean oh, i think I, it's gonna be bad for you, you know even if he right, lives right, yeah right. i think no matter it what be. it's gonna be bad you shot a cop either way yeah so this is the stressor i guess that you know a better movie would exploit in a way that like sends this guy over the edge we're just supposed to assume i guess that you know he's always been kind of uh uh on the edge of oh, sanity. Oh, yeah, definitely. Anyway. He's on the, he's the lunatic fringe. Yeah. yeah. He thinks he's in the jungle, you know. He <laughs> yeah. thinks I've Everything's lost in the jungle. He's with... giving orders to people. He's like, this is my command. You do what I say. Yeah. To the kid, the victim, <laughs> the kid. you know, who's like, yeah. my friends are all dead. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then Jack Palance is there yeah. and he's just like, there was a shed. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can That's you, a... <laughs> Can you take me to the shed? That's a really good impression. <laughs> it's kind of, it's a little Clint Eastwood. It's a little they, dirty, they, hairy, but they, yeah. They, they share a similar uh, expression. Yeah. They do, yeah. That's pretty solid. And, it's, guys, and it's always through Dave Franco. I mean, when they do show up, like, you know, in scenes together, like, or just even apart, it's like they, I mean, they are these actors who have this, like, they have gravitas. Like, yeah. They command the screen. Yeah. Even they do. In, when, in this, I mean, because they're, <laughs> they're, they're, their performances are cranked up you know quite a bit oh, i mean they yeah. are like they're heightened. giving it yes. their all yeah. yeah but i mean they like take the goddamn movie over when they show up <laughs> you know when they whether you want them to or not yeah <laughs> yeah it's like do you dial that down or how do you calibrate does, this can, i don't know it's is just martin it's, landau have that ability to no, dial it down i don't that think man, they can. i've seen him in he's just like i don't think they can wild eyed yeah. and crazy He's always, yeah. I mean, rarely does a poor man get to, to be a, 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 a mailman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go back and Just listen to that yeah. Alone in the Dark episode. Yeah, because um, yeah, he had like a second career. I'm like trying to think what kicked off his second career, you know, um, because Probably Jack Polantz show. did also, um, you know, because he was in Batman, but then he won the Oscar for City Slickers. City Slickers and famously did, did the one arm push up, uh, you know, uh, he did. at the Oscars at 86 years old or whatever the hell he right. was. <laughs> but Martin Landau, I mean, he was in like Woody Allen. Uh, what was that? Um, uh, Secrets and Lies or I always, Crimes and Misdemeanors. I always instantly right, remember yeah. that he was in The Majestic. Yeah, yeah, and the X Files movie. Yeah. I mean, like, he had right, like X-Files. this. Yeah. And, oh, it was, uh, it was Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Yeah. Ed Wood. yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I'm glad that they kind of got rescued from North this phase of their, well, yeah, I mean, but that's like, what he's famous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Frank and Weenie. <laughs> Frank and Weenie's what did it. <laughs> so, I mean that, there you go. So Jack Palance <laughs> is able to disarm Martin Landau, but Martin Landau is not down for the count. He's just, uh, you know, been put in his place by Jack Palance. And so Jack yeah. Palance is like, we're going to that cabin. I can't do it as well. That's as good. Take me to the shed. Take me <laughs> to the shed. And so we learn on the way to the shed, and he's kind of um, intimidating. Yeah. Because he's yeah. got this knife that he's like, you don't have a choice, you're coming with me. Yeah. And he does kidnap them. Although the boyfriend is, this dude's an idiot. He's like, yeah, yeah, he's right. We should go to this uh, shack in the middle of the lake where we saw a bunch of dead bodies in the middle of the night. Well, because he's like, apparently an alien around. He's compelled yeah. by something, but, you know, because like uh, Caruso apparently was his best friend. So like, yeah, I want to kill that right. thing. And Very I'm going to go with this guy and we're going to kill this thing. Um, and I think uh, so maybe this is like an echo of that first scene, you know, like you have only now it's Palance and, and the kid. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to you're going to be my hunting companion. <laughs> and we're going to go. We're going to kill this thing. And so they go out to the shed. Uh, oh, we find out that Palance also has had an encounter with the alien creature. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because he has a scar in his arm. Or one of these like uh, alien things attacked him. He got it off. He hasn't told yeah. anybody about it because he doesn't want to sound crazy like his buddy. Which uh, is a good point. 
It is. Like he said that, I'm just like, he's smarter than I thought he was. But it makes sense to how he knows to cut off the flesh frisbees. Because no one else seems to know to do that. How can you not, like, uh, 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 understand this? The thing attacks you, you you cut it off. It's like a leech. You burn it off? Yeah. Yeah. Do something. Try something. I mean... People get, people get hit and they just like immediately stop trying. I mean, yeah. they I mean, are I, hit I, I, without I, warning. Maybe it's just the <laughs> shock. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the thing is like burrowing into them. Yeah, who True. knows what it feels you know? like? Right, yeah. going maybe yeah. it's in, in their veins and going. Yeah, their maybe body it, it like stuff. puts in some sort of like poison that like paralyzes them or something. I don't know. Yeah, it I'm, does kind of look like they're getting eaten from the inside out when I show the yeah. bodies. If it's like there's some holes in them, there's yeah. eyes that have yeah. been eaten away. It's and burrowing stuff like into that. them. Yeah, yeah. So it looks kind of painful. It does have like that oopy. Goopy, you know, as we said, the sound effects are like hilariously. Uh, at one point, uh, you see like the effect bubbles up and pops. It pops, mm. and it's like a full on like. Yeah, <laughs> the, the sound effects the editor was having a lot of fun, uh, fun well, there. Yeah. Not he, he was. He's like, fuck it. I'm it's not natural to this scene, but it's fun. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. Good for that guy. I liked it. So at this point in the movie, right? Right. And this is where I guess we got to turn to Michaela, who's watching this thing for the first time. Um, yeah, what? Everyone else had seen this before? I had not seen this. Okay. I had seen part of it. I mean, you've seen it no, before. Oh, okay. Seen it. But like, Holly knew it was coming. Yeah. You knew there was aliens. Oh, yeah. You knew that like there was an alien somehow throwing these uh, killer frisbees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think at this point? Because we're like 45. I'm least. like, <laughs> it's only going to be like the last scene in the movie. I'm like, fuck. That's... Well, you knew there was an alien. Yeah. Well, I okay. mean, it's on the poster. It's yeah. like on the, it's, yeah, you can't escape the imagery for it, unfortunately. Right. But... So nobody's snowed under by the idea that like we're being invaded by a bunch of flying. Uh, yeah. I don't think frisbees. the discs are the aliens. Okay. <laughs> no. I know there's an alien. <laughs> I saw a big yeah. head shadow. Okay. Plus, they keep doing like the Bigfoot perspective, like that's like stalking them. We that's keep, very we true. Keep getting yeah. the, that's true. Yeah, the kids the did POV. see something. Yeah. Okay. And at one point, I think you actually do see the alien. You in do. A there is a shot. there is a very brief shot that you see it like behind a bush. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. looking through the grass, just like a yeah. Leatherface in that new Texas Chainsaw yeah. movie. Yeah. It's the it's, same it's, shot almost. It is the same. <laughs> shot. Yeah. That's pretty good. Actually, yeah. I'm just like, oh, he's, like, oh and it's in the daytime, so it's creepier. Yeah. 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 So they get out to the shack. Palance goes like, yep, there's dead people in there. Yeah, but his like his face when he walks in and sees all the bodies, instead of being horrified, he's like giddy. Is it and how you took cr- it? Yeah. I yeah. think he's very happy. He's he very found, happy. Like he's because he oh, found the. Uh, no, he is game. not he horrified. His... He is excited. Oh, I thought that was because he's like, right. He's been right. Face. Yeah. No, no, no. I no. could no. be he's misreading not... Jack Palance. Yeah, right. no, he is not horrified. He is like happy. Yeah, because he found excited. the place and he's just like, I found all his food. Which, may, which honestly, back. I thought was super creepy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, his, yes. Like, his reaction, I was like, holy shit. Like, he, it that, was that. very, like, demented. Yeah. Because he's like, you don't know what you found. This is the alien's uh, trophies and that yeah. area where he keeps his food. Yep. And that means he's going to have to come back here and we can get the upper hand on him. I mean, I was thinking at this point, I'm like, well, I already know what's in the shed. <laughs> Okay, yep, you're right. They're in the shed. I thought maybe the movie was going to, you know, do something like it. And then they're not there. But nope, they're there. That's what I thought. I thought he was going to go in and they weren't going to be there. Yeah, this yeah. movie oh, misses there. opportunities for misdirection and shock. Oh, absolutely. All the time. Mm-hmm. All and the it, time. It's like. it ha- And it hangs on so many moments where, like, there should be, like, a shadow or a hand or something. Yeah. It hangs there and then nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing. Go to the next scene. Happen. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I don't know. Yeah. It's I'm like sitting there going like, are we conditioned to expect in these scenes that something's going to happen? But I mean, like in order to have a movie that has some kind of interest to it, you have yeah. to have something happen in your, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know, like, and, the, and there's angles where like we, it's like a perfect angle that we would see behind a door if it gets shut or opened or whatever. And there's nothing there. Like there's so many missed opportunities and they hang on it long enough that like, they clearly know that there should be something there. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't hang on it that long. So you think that they were like going, okay, we're... I we're, think this is their misdirection. Yeah, we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. You expect <laughs> this is good. But they use the cat scare. They do. They use yeah, the... They do. Uh, they someone do. creeps up behind somebody else and puts their hand on their shoulder. And I'm like, that it, right. didn't work at all. Because <laughs> they were a shot earlier. They were right next to each other. And they're like, it shouldn't be scary. <laughs> well, and the, the cat scare like the cat doesn't even cooperate in this because like the cat doesn't come leaping out of a closet or anything. it just like scurries by yeah, like yeah. the cat's but, like but give the me the fuck out of here like, yeah. it's like alright calm down cat 
It's that quick skitter your cat does when it knows it's in, it's in trouble and it yeah. wants to get out of the room real fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they end up after the uh, after the you know, so they're going to set up this uh, this uh, trap for the alien, but that doesn't go well. well. They're at the shed, and then Palance gets attacked by the discs again, right. and the two run off. Yeah, because yeah. he's just go, just go, leave me, just go, yeah. leave me. Yeah. yeah, save yourselves. And then he cuts that off and figures, and you know. Uh, tourniquets his leg, yeah. and then he's on his old journey because he's going to go back to his place, grab some TNT and mm-hmm. plungers and whatnot. So he's off on that journey. Put Which, the thing in the preservation yeah. jar for no good reason. Right, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. And again, a, a nice little like like collection of arsenal montage would have been nice. Something, yeah, right. <laughs> Something, thing? something, I don't yeah. Know. Where he's grabbing things off a shelf or something, like yeah, that, something or other. I know because I was sitting there going like in the earlier scene when they went into the shop, there was uh, you know like a sniper, a hunting rifle, right? Like some cut shots the... of like loading a gun, and then you know he looks over and sees the TNT, like something. Like yeah. I need a, I need a montage. <laughs> no, but there's none of that. We just nope. uh, turn the movie back over to the kids. <laughs> so yeah. now it becomes the kids' movies movie again for like in the a next twenty long minutes. Long time. And it's just like. Ugh. It's okay. just in an empty cabin, putting on dry clothes. I don't know. It is the yeah. It is the she most. She falls asleep really fast. A but she wakes times. up every five seconds yeah. a, in this movie. <sighs> I, I couldn't tell the passage of time. No. I mean this. This I think is supposed to be like our big suspense. Uh, you know, like set piece of the movie. Right. It's supposed to be. They have found this creepy house in the middle of nowhere as yeah. they're running, yeah. and so they go in seeking shelter. So they go into this house and then it's like, you know, they change clothes, they find clothes and and he's like, okay, you go to sleep. And then this is all in real time, right? We get the shots from outside that tell us that there is someone watching. Yeah. Something is stalking them. Yeah. And there's little moments like he goes to make coffee and he puts the the kettle under the water. He fills it and then he shuts the water off and he comes back and the water's back on. Yeah. And it's like something is there with them. Yeah, a door but is this open. is I guess this yeah. is what I'm getting at. The the door's open. Yeah. Uh they're like, didn't we turn that light in the closet off? Right. And I'm just like, is the alien snuck into the house? <laughs> And it's just going around like fucking with them. It's like, toying with them. And it's like, I'm yeah. gonna turn I'm gonna turn this faucet on. I'm gonna turn this light on. As they move from room to room. Now yes. the thing is that this house has like three rooms. Right. Yep. It's not a big house. There's not like I don't know how they wrote it. It's one of those things yeah. where it feels like the writers wrote it for like some big bigger space. I'm guessing that by the time the writer that wrote that part had left is when they shot right. it. Right. Then, then, we'll then the fourth it. writer like, yeah. came in and wrote something yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then they're just <laughs> like, well, we're going to do it even though it makes absolutely no sense. You know, it's going to be small, a uh, small yeah. space. And then we're going to have these fake out jump scares with the cat and all that. And you're right. just like, and it goes on forever. It's forever. So we are with them it's forever. So I forgot long. other people were in this movie. Yeah. We're with them for so long. But it has no suspense, even no. though no. Yeah, I guess it has all those scenes where you're like, oh, this is the scene where he stands up and the thing's right. Oh, this yeah. is the scene where they open the door. And the, no. It's, Here's the scene where the thing slaps up against the window. No. All the setup is there. None of them. It, they none couldn't of, put a rubber glove on a stick and give us a hand around the door. <laughs> exactly. They couldn't exactly. fucking do that. Yeah, the only thing we get is there is a shadow. When he's filling up the coffee, there is a, vi- like, a very was, slight shadow. I was just dying for that, like, like the hand when they do like all the fingers. Yeah, like, yeah. I was, I was it's, dying it's, for that. There's a shadow there where you see dying it for up. it. Yeah, but it's not like dark enough where you can barely see it when he. Horror walks Express away. gave us that like eight times yeah, before we yeah. actually <laughs> saw the yeah. creature in but that. When that happens, I always wonder. It's like, did they not? Did they see their monster and they didn't have confidence in it? You know, like at this point in the movie, we haven't actually seen it yet, so. right? Mm-hmm. And so you go like, well, Maybe. does that mean they're like, yeah, we can't show this thing up close? But when we do see the thing, like later on, it's like. Meh. You know it's I mean? fine. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, it's a pretty cool looking, you know, big bulbous right. blue alien yeah. thing. But for all we know, this is as much as they could show us that looked good. Maybe it wasn't for ready. Maybe it wasn't ready for like most. It has to be because you can fake a hand pretty easily. A hand around a door is pretty easy mm-hmm. to, you know, yeah, that because, doesn't require much. Yeah, just Actually, blue, blue it is. Paint. Yeah, in the same blue. the same sequence. You do see that, right? There is the right uh, when we finally do get a glimpse of the alien. After the, the fingers through the board, fingers through the board. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. but I actually, I guess we had seen the full thing before that because she, the lead girl, wakes up. 
again. Right. The, like, the one moment that actually like satisfied us was that she wakes up and she goes into the living room and he's sitting at, and what's his name? Is it Randy? What's his name? I think Randy was the guy. Tom. Is no. it Tom? <laughs> no. <laughs> Rand, no. Lead, Sebastian lead Stan. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Main he's, dude. Yeah. He's sitting in the classic, chair. He's, he's like, sitting in the chair. Yes. He's, he's like guarding. He's, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to drink coffee. I'm going to stay up all night, which he said many times. Like, we get it, dude. You're going to be drinking coffee and stay up. <laughs> yes. Remind me Halloween for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah. The, the chairs, like the back of the chairs to the, to the entryway. So she walks in. And I think every single one of us was like, he better be dead. He yeah. better be a flesh <laughs> uh, No, I start praying. I'm like, please be dead. Please be dead. Please be dead. Something <laughs> I, needs to happen. I was hoping he'd be dead, but the cat would be in his lap. That would be <laughs> And sure enough, she turns the chair out, and there is a flesh frisbee burrowing into his head. Yes. And we're like, oh, finally. Finally. And because we, something happens, and, and B, I don't like this guy, so yeah, thank God yeah, he's dead. pretty much. And it was a decent enough scene, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, when it actually finally happens, you're like, right. okay, now there's something actually happening. And she turns around, and the fucking alien is, like, in the room, and doesn't he, like... He goes, wow. He reaches out for her. Yeah. And makes some noise. Like, this is the best part of the alien to me. Right. This might be the best part of the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, because I like that she's only got the flashlight or a, mm-hmm. a, a lantern or something. So she shines it on him and then to the corner just to see. The, it's our first look at the alien. Yeah. yeah. And they and cut away quick. really quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're like, ooh. Right. You know? So that in good. that 15 seconds <laughs> is really good. Yeah. <laughs> And then Jack Palance comes along uh, out of nowhere to right. save her yeah. because uh, she goes to the basement, Bust through the window. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I always love those scenes because they're completely unmotivated. It's like, how in the fuck did he get here to this right. house? How did he know to come to this window and right. the basement? Shoot through the window because mm-hmm. Colin, he is hunting the alien. We find and out he doesn't even know. <laughs> yeah, that's well. Yeah, yeah, the alien doesn't. That's his whole speech. It's that's like weird. I'm hunting him. And he doesn't even know it. You know, we got to get back to the cabin. <laughs> Sean, what did you say it was like? I said, well, I said it was like, well, so you're, you're, he's locked in here with you, huh? Or like, yeah. you're locked on this planet with me. Yeah. Yeah. It's Rorschach, right? Yeah. 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 Rorschach from yeah. Uh, The Watchmen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I kind of loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I liked it. I dug like, it. This part was good. Yeah, these, he's like, you're on my planet now, bitch. <laughs> yeah. These are the trailer moments. I think yeah. he's yeah. here to hunt us. You know, and so he lays out what I assume has the audience figured this out? He's telling you the alien is a hunter and it's right. here to hunt like humans. He's, yeah, he's not here to invade anything. He's here to be, he's here right, to hunt for, for sport. sport. Right. Yeah. Says sport. yeah. So they <laughs> hightail it back to this uh, little shack out in the middle of nowhere, right? Where they're going to await the alien to appear. And yeah, again, right. we've only had this fleeting glimpse of the alien at this point, but Palance has rigged the um, shack <laughs> with dynamite. Sure. You're right, laughing. in a very, uh, very, very concealed, very you wouldn't notice it way. He literally just leaned the sticks up against <laughs> he the outside. The of, yeah. the it's like this will be fine. Don't but, you have to like secure it a little bit, right? Like dig it, dig like a little a, bit of a divot well, yeah, for like it. The rest of us are all used to like modern spy movies. We're like, he's got to set the charges. No, yeah. he just leans the dynamite. <laughs> just on lean there. it up against the, the wall. It'll be fine. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. There's like so many problems with this, but yeah, I mean, and and he has his uh, rifle with the scope and yeah. him and the girl, and I'm like. We're getting ready. And I'm like, well, you know, what about if it comes up behind you? Isn't it following you? I mean, mm-hmm. how does this and work? then slight camera move to the left. And oh, look, there's Martin Landau. <laughs> Who I forgot about. Yeah. <laughs> Who we all forgot about. And Martin Landau and Jack Palance star in Two Old Men Fighting in the Woods. <laughs> anyway, the movie you've always yeah. wanted to yep. see. The Martin sequel. Landau actually did have another scene. Uh, oh, he when he's pretending to be the cop. Yeah. 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 They're trying to get out of there. They're trying to flag down a car. A cop car comes up, but it's Martin Landau. Yeah. And then there's this whole protracted thing where he's clearly lost his mind yeah. and right. believes that they are actually... Uh, he's like, you're the alien. Tell me your plan. And he's like, all right, I'll tell you my plan. This goes on for a while, Earth's too. Earth's divided into seven sections. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> We're doing would you, this? Would you like me to draw it for you? And he literally draws it in the sand. And that's why I was like, what is, yeah. What is yeah. this? Like, what's your plan here? Yeah. How are you going to get out of this? You know, it, but like, it's, <laughs> it is kind of well when you start playing into his delusion. I would have been curious too. It's like, so what happens if you do start? Because you're always wondering, like, what is more dangerous to, to deny his delusion and get shot because of it, or to play into it, right? And you don't know where that's right, go. right? Well, that's what makes Martin Landau, like, yeah, trying to rationalize the crazy, yeah, right, dangerous yeah. to me because I don't know which way is more dangerous. Well, they end up jumping off a bridge, so it doesn't that work out true. for yeah, them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they get chased by a slow motion police car, 
<laughs> right, yeah. Well, it's kind of like him. a notorious that if you... If if someone's having like an episode or something, you don't like tell them to stop. You don't try to come at them and make them think what they're doing is bad. Right. That's gonna, gonna trigger anybody. them and make it worse. Right. So you have to like calm them and make them think that like you're you're with them. You're on the same page. Yeah, That's what's gonna calm you them can't, down. Like take the personification of the thing that he wants to kill. This seems like a I bad mean, no, tactical it's, there's, move. There's flaws in this plan, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> I was you nervous wanna... for these actors jumping off this bridge. Yeah, I like, whoever did it. This does not seem like a movie that has stunt people. So, right, the, or, <laughs> uh, or uh, if nothing else, people who would go check and see if there's rocks under. Yeah, that water make sure the water is deep, deep enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah my not... first thought was how fucking shallow is that? Yeah. 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 No, why? Okay, we all thought that. Because it was a big yeah. bridge. Yeah. Is that because the movie had showed us our creek bed all through this movie that's a like dry, very shallow, very dry, yeah. a and, shitty lake? And like, I don't trust anybody. All the I was gonna say all the bodies of water in this movie are terrifying. Yeah, like, they're every, all suspect. Everything in this movie suggests that there's a drought right now. Yeah. Okay, because I thought that too when they jumped off. I'm like, this is going to be like, there's five feet there, right? Yeah. And they're, like, under that and they're water. dropping like, what, 40, 50 <laughs> feet? It was, uh, like, yeah. Jump. yeah. Um, and Fuck so it. that's, it's <laughs> after that moment uh, that they end up at the, uh, the, right. the, the, the house. Drying and they break off into and the, getting yeah. clothes and all that stuff. And, yeah. So at the end of the movie, the, you know, so yeah, you have a, a fight between uh Palance and Landau. Mm, great. And exactly then, what I wanted. Yeah, old Fuck men the fighting the woods. I want them fighting. <laughs> I know, because now he thinks that, that uh, Palance is a, a, an imposter. There's like a whole thing with this, right? This, <laughs> yeah. this is his character uh, is like, you know, just doesn't Our Landau's in his old movie. Yeah. He thinks he's in <laughs> Vietnam fighting aliens who have taken over the bodies of people. Right. Yep. Which never there's another me. more interesting movie. Let's watch that. Yeah. Let's see him in Vietnam. Thinking he's fighting aliens and taking over oh. people's bodies. Alien invasion Vietnam movie. Yeah. Huh. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. 20, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Saturday night as long as Martin Lando's in it, and so is Jack Palance. Yeah, um, they got to fight in the jungle. I'm in. They yeah, fought in the woods. They can fight in the jungle. <laughs> and then Donald Pleasant shows up, yeah. uh, commanding oh. officer. Oh. As the same character, he's still goofy and high. <laughs> yeah. Still wandering through the and movie. eating in every scene. Yeah. Yes. Sean, were you you were genuinely concerned that was going to happen in this movie, weren't you? That uh, Donald Pleasance is going to walk in out of nowhere. I mean, Dean Cundey was there, so right. it's possible. <laughs> the alien rips his head off. Yeah. It's, it's fucking Donald Pleasance. <laughs> oh, that would have been great. Oh, yeah. I, five stars. <laughs> yeah. Applause. Standing I'm, ovation. Yeah, I, was say, I might have leapt out of my seat if that happened. I Holy would have shit. been like greatest yeah. movie ever. Bravo. Did not see it coming. <laughs> but unfortunately, the alien, when he does show up, and yes, he looks impressive, and yes, because it's Dean Cundey, he <laughs> shot and lit very well. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a, as like, well as he can be. Yeah. yeah, and there's it's fog like, and stuff. As it's well. yeah. yeah, there's pretty atmosphere. Fog. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but he just. But uh, they are standing there. They are standing next to a little shack on a very well mowed piece of land. It is kind of uh, well, but it belongs to the water department. Oh, that's very true. They would keep it upkeep. They would. Stuff. They would. My, you're right. Mm -hmm. My bad. I'm sorry. I questioned it. I'm very sorry. But there's lots of just like long shots of the alien just standing just there standing staring there. at them. We get close up shots of the alien just standing there staring at them. A couple of times the alien. Oh, no. Yeah. Because uh, Landau, right now, actually seeing the alien, right. wants to go up to it. Slowly and, walks right. up to it. You know, because he's got a drop. He's got the drop on it. He's got the gun on the alien. Right. And he's like, you know, like, hey, you're finally here. And like, what did you what do you want? And where are you invading first? And all this other stuff. Alien just stares at him. And back in the in the bushes. Palance is like, get him closer to the cabin so mm -hmm. I can detonate the thing. Right. And then the alien does make a move. Chucks its flesh frisbees, like <laughs> Chinese stars. Yeah. yeah. Also in the trailer. I think that's how he throws the title. At the, <laughs> at, nice. I remember the trailer is without warning. Nice. Uh, that's um, awesome. Boy, best. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you could cut a really cool trailer to this movie. The trailer is not. We should watch the trailer after this. The trailer is pretty decent. I mean, it would make you want to see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, But so Landau, you know, has like, I mean, it's not even a very dignified death scene. No. He gets two of the suckers on him and then just kind of. <gasps> Yeah. Collapses to the ground. Like right in front of the alien. He like makes it right in front of him and drops. Yeah. And then the alien yeah. is ready to attack the other two. Yeah. Is he? No, he I just mean, stands no. there. Okay, that's what I thought. And then uh I think he whips a couple of the frisbees. Well yeah, because that then she's like, We don't have time to try the TNT. You gotta you gotta shoot him. Right. So that he so that Jack P plants tries to shoot him and that's when he gets the flesh for his beast. That's right, because the alien pops in like uh all this yellow liquid. Yeah, he uh, does shoot him and then we discover that the alien <laughs> I forgot is about that. yelled with yeah, gasoline. He leaks a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And he uh, looks like a mannequin because he's barely moving in this scene. Yeah. yeah, like his greatest move 
his biggest movements in this movie are when his oh. hand. It's his, his hand. Arm. It's when he reaches out in that one scene, and then he's just flipping. Flipping the frisbees. frisbees. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of, it's just weird to see him throwing a little it bit. Looks, it's very weird. <laughs> it's, yeah. It looks very, I'm glad, I see why they cut away from it a lot. I know, but I was hoping, I guess, even as, you know, Landau was walking up there, because you're always at least be, I'm reminded of, you know, when you're having contact with the aliens, it's like the humans walking up to the, the, the Martians and War of the Worlds or something. Yeah. So there's going to be a death ray, right? Because right. we saw a night beast. Where you have that, and I'm like, there's gonna this alien's gonna fucking zap him with something. Yeah. But yeah. nope, he throws the Flash little Rizzi. pancakes, yeah. and that's all he's got. That's all he got. At least, like, if they had a bigger budget, I wish it would have been at least been like, like, like they were part of him, like something like opened on him and they came yeah. out. Like that would have been cool. Yeah. Something. Or they, they turn you into. A they didn't have alien that kind of budget. A different being. No, they just yeah. eat you. You're down. Yeah. yeah, and then he takes you back to his uh, cabin and strings you up. But so Palance injured, right? Because right. he's got yes. another sucker on him. Yeah, because it's on his back. He can't reach it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there's no one there to help him. Oh, except for the young lady. <laughs> except right for the young there. lady what that the could hell? very easily. He's like, uh, uh, he, he's like, no, no, there's no, I'm going to die. There's no choice. <laughs> Save yourself. You can't help me. Yeah, I'm going to get him close to the cabin, and you're going to blow the, push the plunger when I get there. And so, Palance mounts a- Alien! (laughs) He just yells alien and charges the front lines. Yes, he does. This is a four-star moment. Beautiful. It's a four-star moment. It really is. Especially just because of the way he runs up there. That was- It's it's Jack Palance attacking alien. That was Clark. Yeah. Running, that was great in Clark. <laughs> oh, was it? Yeah. They didn't even have plants? Oh, yeah, does he have like knee issues probably. or something? Probably, he's like, old. Yeah, he's done a lot of westerns <laughs> and fallen off yeah. of horses and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Anytime they needed a double for either Martin Lando or, or uh, Jack Plants, it was great in Clark. Oh, it was you know? him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. All right. Did he jump off the bridge for those two kids too? <laughs> probably. <laughs> he runs convincingly, I thought, you know. <laughs> Full on attack toward the alien alien. But just doesn't there. touch him. No, he or just attack runs him. Into just the cabin. No, that's he's like, what's follow great. me, alien. <laughs> he runs. It's like he's running directly at the alien. Like he's, he's gonna tackle moving. him. You think and he's gonna tackle him? Right. But it's then just a slight left as he just runs past him into the shack. It's yeah. it, it's, it's funny. So it's hilarious. Funny. Yeah, because you're like the alien's not even gonna put up a fight or throw no. something at him. No, it just waits for him to run past him. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he's like, Probably push the plunger. Not a great hunter. No. <laughs> No, no, no you, just see, him, you just see him tackling deer, and like that's how he gets them. <laughs> yeah. Snapping he's, deer necks. He's, he's not good at close range, apparently, because man, he's right there and he can't get him. No. I wasn't even sure what was going on with the whole plunger thing because she does par- press the plunger, but nothing happens because she said about the a wire. wire came off or something. Is that what it was? Or he yeah. never? She wired said the it up? wire, and then she was like and recoiling it. it which, yeah, back around. Yeah. And we're like, oh, the suspense because the alien's gonna get away and he's not gonna get blown up by it. And she does yeah. press the plunger and boom, the whole cabin <laughs> explodes and the, and the, and the dummy mannequin alien. The dummy alien. Yeah, yeah. the mannequin <laughs> alien also explodes. But it's a mannequin <laughs> alien on a very visible like wooden uh, oh, yeah. frame yes. you know, standing <laughs> out in front of this thing. Yes. Which I think they capture the explosion of it like four or five times it seems right. like they're just replaying <laughs> the part where it Boom! Burst into to flames. Yeah. It's like bam. Okay, we got this alien. I was the really, end. I was really hoping for credits right there. <laughs> I mean, All it I did needed. the next best thing because I, I thought that was what was going to happen. It was like boom, alien exploded credits. But they do this like uh, voiceover. Yeah, with like a shot of the sky. But it, well, it was starscape. Stars, but yeah. it, and it's Martin Landau for, saying yeah, some it's from earlier in the movie. Yeah, about how the invasion happened. Or no, he says uh, something to the effect of, we well, think, well, the stars out there, you think we're alone think we're in alone? this universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a warning sign to us. Oh, that's the keep watching the skies uh, yeah. tag for the end of this movie, probably. Yeah. yeah. Very profound. They made that yeah. up probably after the fact because they it didn't know like how to it. get out of this movie. Yeah. Could have just ended on the explosion. Yeah, right? explosion. Really yeah. yeah. The end. Yeah. But, th- but they, don't, they don't take that around. <laughs> like, these are not the people of, no. like, I'm the sorry. Obvious choice. It, yeah. Did they ever take any opportunity in this movie? No. <laughs> no. Right. No. No, they right. didn't. No. So then, uh, then uh, it's it. the credits <laughs> roll and, and we're out of it. And we're like, okay, it's, uh, that, was, that, was, that was it, I guess. That's without warning. Yeah. With it just members occurred, of F Troop. It just occurred to me, like, was there music? I don't remember. Yeah. I sometimes there was too much music and sometimes it cut dramatically in the middle of a scene. Because I don't even remember the music of this movie. I didn't, not, I didn't notice it at all. Well, you're not supposed to, I guess, but you feel the emotion of it. 
Did you? No. All right, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to tell you whether or not you should watch uh, without warning. Will we give you warnings or not? <laughs> I feel like many warnings. warnings. <laughs> <laughs> many, many warnings. But first, our first warning is going to come in the form of Igor, who's going to bring us our mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Igor, if you touch me with that flesh frisbee, <laughs> I swear to <laughs> fucking God, put it away. Thank you. There you go. He's, he's the, the the tip of the spear in the invasion force. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 No, no. Igor hunts for sport. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show. You can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, tonight, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Please tell me we're putting the alien on the wall. We are putting three people on the wall. Because that's what happens. Are three people in this movie? Hold on. Jack Palance, right? Jack Palance, Martin Jack Palance. (laughs) And Dave Caruso. Okay, Jack Palance is on the Saturday Night Freak Yay! Show Wall of Fame yeah. for About his time. appearances in Tango and Cash. That's true. <laughs> and the aforementioned Alone in he the Dark. Yeah. No, he said Tango, Tango. Yeah. Cash. Cash. You gotta like hold the rats while you're doing it though yeah. to get the full effect. No, Tango. True. There were rats in there. Cash. Movie. Yeah. That's true. And he, they were his rats. Yeah. Yeah. Rat he, maybe it's he has a thing, a uh, rat uh, uh, yeah, affinity and Brings it with him to every movie. We're also putting David Caruso <gasps> on the Saturday what? Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought too. Did we watch the CSI on the show? <laughs> Three movies. Okay, so we, without warning, mm-hmm. uh, we also watched uh, Session Nine. Okay. And we watched Hudson Hawk. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sad oh, I'm I wasn't here for Hudson Hawk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where he was Kit Kat. Oh, right. yeah. They yeah, all had candy bar candy names. Bar. Yeah. yeah. Butterfinger. Kit yep. Kat. And we are know. also mm-hmm. putting the alien, Kevin Peter Hall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is on the wall, and you're like, okay, what have we watched? Well, yeah, he's very tall. Yeah, so we've watched without warning. Mm-hmm. We've watched Predator Two because mm-hmm. he was the predator was. in Predator yep, yeah, Two, yeah. also. Yeah. And we watched Monster in the Closet, where he was the monster. Was he the monster? In monster in the Closet. <laughs> Forgot that was that. 1990. So he has a career, obviously, of yeah. playing uh, um, movie monsters. He obviously wasn't coloring color. There you go. That's right. He had things to do. Uh, Okay, so about tonight's movie, Without Warning, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, oh, it's a Graydon Clark production. (laughs) He says, well, that about sums out how great of a movie it is. Cameron Mitchell being in this, I get. But who did Graydon Clark hold hostage to get Martin Landau and Jack Palance in this flick? Some of you may be surprised to see a young David Caruso. But I was more surprised to see a somehow still alive Larry Scor- Storch. Yeah. He's from after. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Travis Legler says Alligator, Doom Asylum, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Phantasm 1 and 2, Chopping Mall, The Blob, The Fog, Brain Damage, Hell Knight, and now, without warning, all movies that I never heard of or just barely knew about and then ended up buying because the freak show picks it and posts a picture that makes me think, fuck it, why not? Why not? And it was interesting to learn that this film was credited with being an inspiration for the 1980s to film 87 film Predator, where that would also star Kevin Peter Hall as a costumed hunter of alien origin. It's crazy. Well, you guys give me a lot of laughs, but damn, you are hard on the wallet. And I'm pumped <laughs> to hear about this one. You bought this? He saw, probably saw the trailer. Yeah. And it was like sold. Yeah. There, I mean, there's dedication. Like you said, let's, uh, <laughs> look at that list of everything he had not seen or heard mm-hmm. of before us. So. I mean, I do not... Thank you, and I, you're welcome. I do not take responsibility for you purchasing this movie. <laughs> hey, we had to pay to watch it. No, we didn't. Uh, we got a free free trial. Oh, yeah. yeah. Trial. Well, we okay, we'll see if in a week, Colin. Right. Is, yeah, don't, <laughs> Colin might pay a week from now to don't watch that movie. That movie cost yeah. me $150. I know, yeah. yeah. Okay, because yeah, screen picks sounds like something that's going to steal your data, Colin, so you should probably cancel it. It doesn't sound like a real service. Well, it is an Amazon channel, but we do want to warn you, if you are trying to seek this movie out, it is on screen picks, which you can have a trial for, but it is also available on the library app Hoopla, but that one is 
is like off of a VHS. Yeah, that's bad. So yeah. if you want to see it in, if you want to strain your eyes really bad, watch that one. Yeah, but four the, by three. Do Ugh. the free trial on screen picks because that's the uh, restored uh, Shout Factory version. Yeah, yep. but wait off on that until the end of this show, <laughs> and we'll tell you if you. Yeah, should even that's go to that your route. that's your discretion. I'm not telling you to do it. <laughs> Well, Adam Kaler says, TV news headline, intergalactic discus throw champion comes to a small town to toss toothy personal pan pizzas for fun and frivolity. <laughs> Film at 11. That's, I do that's like your news headlines. Yes. That's great. <laughs> frivolity. I need to bring back that word. I love that. Uh, Andrew Paulson Kirk says, it's a harrowing PSA on the dangers of Egg Foo Young. <laughs> And Michael Whitaker said this was a movie in the same way the emergency broadcast system <laughs> is a television show. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in my back pocket. That's, that's a good one. Yeah, that's that's a, amazing. That's a good reference. <laughs> Just because it's on my TV doesn't mean it's a TV <laughs> yeah. show. You know what I mean? Okay, I recommend that review. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and last week we watched a movie called New York Ninja about that action dude right in. Oh, I would expect action dude. Well, yeah, I, mean, I love action yeah. dude. He's awesome. Well, action dude says, "Hey, my four fave freakers, your show continues to amaze me. You always dig up movies either I've never heard of or have long since forgotten. Keep doing what you do. You give us a sane in an insane world, <laughs> and peace out. Thank you. Thanks, action, action dude. dude. I'm glad this is the sanity. There you go. What yeah. a world we live yeah. in. New York ninja. Uh, Steven Helicopter. <laughs> All <laughs> right. I love it. Steven that's Helicopter. The, that's a Nick that's Jr. Amazing. show right there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Steven <laughs> Helicopter. Right, come on in on after Bob after the Bill. Bob the Bill. <laughs> I was just going to say <laughs> Steven <that>. Helicopter. <laughs> well, about uh, New York Ninja, Steven Helicopter writes in and says, I have a question comment, but it's more of a statement. I need Sean to pick some more perverted movies. It's so funny when you guys watch the softcore porn movies disguised as a real movie. <laughs> He says, I love the pot, even when it is a movie I've never heard of or seen. Keep up the great work, guys. I mean, <laughs> I will pick more if they have exploding snakes coming out of toilets. Yeah. yeah. That's, they gotta have all <laughs> that's a key factor. Diamond yeah. heists, man, blow up right. dolls, yeah. hand standing yes. skateboarders. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll do some research and I'll, I'll find a there Two theme songs. Two theme songs. I'm going to point mean, you toward uh, to top that one. <laughs> Vinegar Syndrome and Dracula Sucks. Because it's a Dracula movie, but it's also a porn. I haven't seen it. But oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good, just, I'm glad it's a good it title. Right. It's a good title. I'm I glad like that title. Uh, Novato Judoka says, oh, you guys are in for a treat with New York Ninja. And this is how you film your film in New York City. I'm looking at you, Jason Takes Manhattan. <laughs> and then he says, Sean is taking a strong lead early for best picks of the Freak Show host for this year. Get the Blu-ray. He's only had two picks. I know. I know. He's I'm only had two picks. I haven't had a second pick yet yeah. this year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tired Silver says, I just bought this movie. I hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> you got some great artwork, if nothing else. Right? A very interesting story. Well, yeah, I was like, watch the special features. The, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the story. It's a full package. That's yes. basically what you're getting with New York Ninja. Um, Andrew Bradford says, this is a can't miss. Oh, there we go. Uh, about the previous week's movie, we watched Horror Express. Pat Hetfield writes in and says, uh, Horror Express is a very, very entertaining movie, although the science is questionable, to say the <laughs> absolute least. I also wish Telly Savalas were in it for a few more scenes because he's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And will we ever see your faces on the internet? I expect nothing, oh. nothing less, less of my internet superstars. Mm. We're there. Mm, maybe. Yeah, we're there. <laughs> we're there. You, you can find us. Yeah. Yeah. We're out there. I'm not going to specifically be like, hey, it's me. On mm -hmm. our actual uh, social media channels, if you yeah. dig dig deep enough. It's not hard. Um, yep. <laughs> we're out there. Uh, we got another comment from Andrew uh, Paulson Kirk. He says, it stands to reason that the opposite of brainwashing is brain ironing. D yeah. Mm. Yeah. What about brain drying? <laughs> But then it's got to go smooth. But It'd yeah, horror for Express, for Horror Express, the brain was smooth, so it got ironed out. All right, I'll go with that. Yeah, iron uh, out the wrinkles in the brain. <laughs> Kryptonian orphan. Oh, we were saying, why do uh, all Russian uh, monks or priests look like uh, yeah, Rasputin? They do. And uh, Kryptonian orphan says, or Ray Fiennes from Hades and Clash of the Titans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is true. Uh, Maya Madsen said the new Creep Show series episode Night of the Living Late Show is built around Horror Express, and it's worth checking out if you haven't seen it. I, uh, I still haven't gotten to it, but I yeah. I went back to it, and I, I looked at a few things. I haven't watched it yet, but I looked at a few things, and I'm like, ooh, cool, just to see where he ends mm -hmm. up in the movie. Yeah. So, yeah, I still got to watch it, but yes. Uh, Long Tall Shorty said, who loves you, baby? <laughs> <laughs> And Murphy Brian Goodboy says, great podcast. I love you all. Oh, thank, thank you. you. We, we love, love you. you. 
Yeah, thank you we did not all, that. Uh, each of you, for writing in. Yes. We greatly appreciate. We really it. appreciate it. And now you're going to uh, go around the table. Colin. Oh man, uh, you're not going first, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about? Without warning. Without warning. <laughs> uh, the title's a lie. <laughs> you know, it, there's plenty of warnings. So many warnings. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of verbal warnings and. There's one big warning we didn't talk about. Oh. But if you listen to the Saturday Night Freak Show long enough, you know that we have a theory about white pants. We sure do. <laughs> if you sure wear do. white pants, you are tempting fate. Mm. You, are you are a sociopath. You are asking the universe to give you a challenge that you are unequipped to deal with. Yes. <laughs> the lead lady in this movie wears white pants. She takes them off at one point and then puts them back on. <laughs> so she knows what the white pants are capable right. of. And right. she chooses right. to keep doing it. Bad things happen as soon as she puts the white ha- exactly. pants back on. Exactly. Right. Literally, like... Her the boyfriend second, dies and there's an alien. She, yep. t- she takes them off to go swimming. Everything's yep. fine. Yep. She puts them back on. Friends are dead. Yep. She takes them off to dry out and to take a nap. Puts them back on. Boyfriend's, Boyfriend's dead. dead. Yeah. She the had plenty of warnings. Of the, white the, the, pants. Pants. the white pants. White pants. The, no good comes from white <laughs> pants ever. Avoid them at all costs. It'll save yes. you so many problems <laughs> and anxieties in your life. Tide, this needs so, to be a commercial yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah. I have to rethink my wardrobe now. <laughs> yeah. Ty needs to do a final go commercial. <laughs> right. We need to. If, so if it would be the ultimate thing if at the end they if this thing showed it like Super Bowl Sunday, the entire thing and it was a Tide commercial. <laughs> yeah. I mean it would I'd be buy stock and tide. It'd be a good one because her white pants are unstained. Like she right? crawls in a dirt hole in white pants and they come that? out perfectly Just, white. Uh, parody of a horror movie. Oh, I the woman's know. wearing white pants, which is like, oh no, Tide. Something I feel like, like that. that has to have existed I at some like point, like right? There was yeah, a parody. Like, Rob look, Zombie, he gets the blood stains out. Yeah. Didn't Rob Zombie do like a like it was on the set of Lords of Salem or something. It was this whole thing with like an executioner, like and he had the sheets and then they got clean. Rob Zombie huh. did like okay. a. I, I don't remember like if it was tied, but yeah. Maybe OxyClick. <laughs> Billy Mays made one a cameo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, I yeah. Like white pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> white pants. It, it, don't wear white pants. She should have known. It, yeah um it i mean as as great as like some of this cast is and it has some moving pieces like you know great and clark like uninvited was a fucking spectacle to behold you know uh unfortunately can't say the same about this movie uh i colin i have a conspiracy theory based on what you said about the alien not being finished i think this movie was shot chronologically and they were like oh well they had all these plans to fit in the alien earlier on in the story but it wasn't finished so like they could only fit it in at awesome. the end when they had it done. Like the shark and yeah. dog. Yeah. Right. So um, <laughs> shadow. Yeah, it's it's very misleading. I don't I feel like maybe we're in maloning territory. I feel like I haven't seen the trailer, so I can't yeah, speak to how severely we may or may not have been maloned, but we're on the malone scale. We've definitely on the scale. Only I can reveal that truth. Yes, I look forward to that. Um I I gotta pass on it. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's just kind of pointless and not a lot of fun stuff to make up for the pointlessness. So I think I'm going to have to pass on it. But that being said, I think I will probably forget this movie very quickly. I think <laughs> yeah. so too. So. If it wasn't for Jack Palance and Mark mm-hmm. Landau, who will and I will forever be in that group of torment for me, whatever right. it is. Yeah. I'll never forget. Yeah. So I'm going to pass. Sean, what did you think? Uh, well, I just mentioned that I was tormented by <laughs> yeah. the stars of this movie. Right. So yeah. uh, I'm also going to pass it. There is uh I I was promised an alien movie and I didn't get an alien movie and I'm kind of very upset about it. Um, I mean the alien, the parts with the alien I thought were like the best parts of the movie. I don't know this. It goes on. It's definitely not what I thought it was going to be. It's not what was sold to me, and I don't have too much interest in watching Martin Landau uh, deal with his PTSD um, in this movie. Uh, there's a lot of time where nothing happens in this movie. Um, there's a couple interesting things. There's a couple funny things, but man, I, uh, watch the, uh, watch the trailer and I think you're uh, good yeah, apparently. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just didn't do it. Um, not exciting. Didn't even try to take some paths that could have led to interesting decisions for this movie. So nah, it's just not, it's not there. So I'm going to pass on without warning. And I know that comes as a surprise. Maybe you had no warning that that was going to happen, but it didn't. <laughs> Who's next? Colin. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I think uh, echoing your sentiment, there's a bait and switch going on here. Yeah. It's because of the marketing materials for the movie uh, that you're expecting it's going to be an alien. There's going to be an alien in this somewhere, and then you don't get it till literally what feels like the last 10 minutes of the movie. Do you think that I'm going with your conspiracy theory? It wasn't finished, so they made up. That's what I'm saying, man. The discs as a. It feels like they, they, they were involved. already there. Yeah, okay. But it seemed like at some point you would say. I, no, actually, no, they had to have the alien because the alien is seen in the distance in that early scene. Yeah. They had it, mm. and but they're just like, we're going to. Maybe it was just a head. Maybe. <laughs> we're going to build suspense and keep the monster off screen because the less you see of it, the scarier it is. But that's a supreme miscalculation in this movie because it does, like. I mean, we keep saying about Martin Landau's PTSD and uh, Jack Polance's, like, you know. General craziness. And there was a scene, actually, when he would, like, his whole uh, thing, like, you know, it's like, we've got to go out to check and all this other stuff. I was actually building a, a character thing in my head that, like, some character that we had seen killed earlier in the movie is like a family member of his that yeah, he has some kind that. of personal thing. And then when he got to the cabin and he saw the one girl... And I'm like, oh, it's his daughter or niece or something. But no, it, it was nothing. And I'm like, okay, so we're we're missing the opportunity to connect, uh, you know, narrative strands that what I think could have made this movie stronger. And unfortunately, yeah. what you get, I mean, you know, I'm saying we're mentioning a lot of this stuff because that's a lot of the movie. After it dispenses with the kind of slasher movie setup within the first half hour or whatever, then it is like dealing with these two guys in very long scenes that are not uh, terribly uh interesting but they are very dramatic because these guys are great you know over the top well over the top they're just very intense yeah uh, i would say that they're powerful intense. actors yeah. that they got in the you know so it's like i just can't recommend the movie on this alone but i'm saying that this is you know like the 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 appeal of it right this is what the movie is yeah, yeah it's martin landau and jack palance fighting an alien and you know whatever going at you know the alien menace it's like right. okay that is a thing and then the end once i think it's from about the point where uh she finds her boyfriend with the thing on his face and from there to the end of the movie it's like okay you know, this isn't done expertly, but this is okay. Right. It, and even, I felt it, oh, it woke me up again. I'm like, yeah, okay, it so goes it faster. relatively strong. Mm -hmm. So you come out of the movie mm -hmm. going like, okay, well, at least I saw something at the end, but it's like, oh my God, you know, I was almost put to sleep by the fact that like nothing happened, nothing happened oh, yeah. in this movie. She gets tucked into bed three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> without anything she happening. Does. Oh, it's just, it's so I guess, yeah, unfortunately it bores the living uh, crap out of you <laughs> and you know, you're like, I have, you know, whatever. It, it, I guess based on that, I can't recommend it, even though I'm pointing out like those are the strong points of it, but overall I think it fails as a, a you got to see it kind of movie. Holly, yeah. what'd you think? <laughs> right. So apparently this movie was on my list. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I heard of it. Where? It's how? been on there for a while. Uh, last week, I remembered it was my pick this week, about five minutes before I got here. <laughs> so I pulled up my list. I saw this movie and I was like, huh, what's that about? <sighs> and all I saw was the poster. Which is and a good I, poster. It's a great poster. I saw who was in it. I saw Dean Cundy and the fact that, um, that they filmed the, like the, Scenes that they were like burrowing, burrowing into the people, like the flesh frisbees. They filmed that in um, Graydon Clark's garage. Hmm. And then I saw the budget. Any guesses on the budget? Mm, three million. <sighs> I'm going to say 5.2 million. One For million. 1980? One million. Yeah. One million? 150,000 oh dollars. Oh my God. Yeah. God. Okay. 75 of that went to Jack Plants and Martin Landau. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Jesus. So it's okay. a $25,000 yeah. movie. Yeah. Wow. Wait, I didn't do no, that right. No, 150. <laughs> yeah, seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah, seventy five thousand dollars movie. Yeah. Well, so I it's like close enough, honey. <laughs> and then like the one thing about the movie that I saw, it said it's a really sleepy slow burn, but fuck what an ending. I was like, I'm in. So that's that's how uh, I pulled this one off my list. Had not seen it. Um so I kind of knew what we were getting into. That obviously I did some research throughout the week and I got an idea of what we were doing, but um 
it was quite an ending. I will, I will say that. It was. It, pretty, I mean, Jack Balance yelling alien. Yelling alien and, and charging an alien. And the, the, that is a great moment. It was fucking great. I was a little disappointed when I saw, like, when I saw the little snippet that they filmed the burrowing scenes in Graydon Clark's garage, just like the phrase, the aliens burrowing into people, I assumed it was going to be cooler. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so I was a little disappointed. I, I think the effects were pretty pretty effective considering the budget. Um, it was pretty gory, pretty gross. Uh, yeah, it is a really fun ending, but it's it's a long it's a long ride to get there. It's a long, boring ride. I don't think I can recommend it just because of a good ending um i i haven't watched the trailer <laughs> I, i'm guessing maybe just watch the trailer or maybe like google the end of the movie or something i don't know um so i'm not gonna recommend it but i think um yeah pretty fun ending it had some good stuff but definitely not enough to invest 89 minutes yeah. of your time <laughs> for someone getting tucked into bed three times yeah, yeah. all right there, you well, go. there it is well, that's a. I guess it's a universal pass on. Yeah. Uh, so this um, means no warning. one can ever watch it again. I right? have to, is I that, have is to that ass- the opposite of. I have to assume <laughs> that when we watched Uninvited, I put it on the list because I looked oh, up maybe. Graydon Clark. Oh, yeah, I would yeah. say so. That's Probably. my assumption. Probably. Probably. I mean, after watching Uninvited, you'd be like, what else has he done? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go on because it was really, it's a logical next because step. Because it yes. was pretty far back on my list. So I was like, I think yes. that's got to be what happened. Pro- most yeah. likely. And so. now Satan's Cheerleaders is on your oh, list. Oh, no. <laughs> Goddamn right it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still curious about Satan's Cheerleaders. I, saying, yeah. I mean, the, t- <laughs> yeah. the title. All right. I haven't learned my lesson yet. Apparently. Right, yeah. yeah. Nope. Well, who knows? Are we watching Satan's Cheerleaders next week? If we learned week? our lesson, We're... we wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, that's... We are ready to be heard again. <laughs> that's right. Uh, well, we're going to find out. We're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Michaela. what are we going to watch next week? Wise Man once said, time is a flat circle. Oh, no. Some might say it's more of a loop. We're going to watch Looper. Oh, boy. Right. Looper. Yeah. Looper. Right. It's turning 10 this year. Oh, so, damn. So you need a palate cleanser is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I just had a weird moment of like uh, time is passing too fast because I could have sworn the movie came out like three years ago and I was like, oh my God, 2012. That movie yeah. damn. is a decade old now. Yeah. So we're going to hold it up to the car- cold hard light of day and see how it ages how 10 it years right, I look forward to that. in the future. And Paul Dano one. is that? Oh, yeah. like, Paul yeah, Dano. Uh, yeah. 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 It's JGL. A good, it's a good yep. choice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jeff all right. Daniels. Mm-hmm. So next week we're watching Looper on the mm-hmm. Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us for that. And as always, uh, take it easy, boys and girls. I can't even remember how, I, but the basement is uh, going dark. <laughs> <laughs>